Now today what I'm going to show you is a clip from my main Patreon video on how to paint a barn owl. So I'm going to take a snippet from that on how to paint the eyes. Let's get started. Right, first things first, piece of paper to protect the paper from your hand. All right, and I'm going to use a size zero, double zero brush. And all I'm going to do first, without knocking the camera, is drop a little bit of water in the eye. Okay, I'm going to miss the, the highlight area for now. So it's coming around the highlight area, a little bit of water in there. And I'm going to come over towards a bit of a high, highlight, highlight, highlight on the side of the eye as well. Okay, let the water soak in just for a minute. Give it a chance to work for you. Just so it soaks into the paper, because you don't want it running like a waterfall in there. You just want it kind of just soak in, lying in there. The first color I'm going to drop into that is going to be the burnt sienna. Okay, just to drop it into the eye. We need a bit of warmth behind to begin with. And this is going to act as a basic layer, a bit of a foundation if you know what I mean. So if you put makeup on, which I don't, if you put makeup on, it's a foundation to the makeup, it's a foundation to the painting. So this is going to be the building blocks, the, the very start of it. Okay, just to begin with, a little bit around there, which is noticed as well, looking at the photo. I'll try and bring in the photograph into the uh, video every now and then. So you can see, just to compare. So that's just the first layer. We start off very light and then get darker as you go along, okay? We'll do the same again on the other eye, just while that one's drying. So we're going to wet that one. So what we want to do is wet around this area, around the outside of the eye. Not all the way around, it's not going to have a, a big ring around its eye. So <laughs> just um, wet that area and then bring it down where it's got this kind of browny colour to it, which is a colour we just mixed, or thereabouts. Again, it's the first layer. Just wet it, only goes to about here on this one. And there's a little bit I've just noticed around this area here, only a kind of highlighted area, just very fine, very light. Okay, re-wet if it's drying too quick for you, which it is on, my, on mine at the moment. Okay, go into your colour that you've got and very lightly just touch that colour in. This will do for the undertones. I think there was a group called that, wasn't there? So this will do for the um, the basic first layer again of the shadow or the colour that's under there. And again, around here, just to kind of give a hint, just a hint of detail there underneath all the detail we're going to put over the top. Soften this out a little bit this time because that's a bit lighter on the top there. And we're going to drop that colour in. Burnt sienna, burnt umber. You'll see the reason behind having this lighter shade underneath once it all comes to uh, near the finish in the eyes. You'll see why that is. There, I have a method in my madness, I promise you. So that's going to come down and around. Keep looking at your reference photo. Make sure that things are still in proportion. It's the right kind of curve, right kind of shape. Because this eye um, does go in a little bit, but it also comes down around here as well. With an extra kind of eyelid, if you wish, an extra crease around here, so you want to kind of get that form going, which is there, okay, while the other side's wet, let's pop a colour in there as well. Right, okay, so back to the eye, is there? <laughs> it says more than one, oh dear. What I'm going to get is a little bit of cerulean blue, I'm not bother putting it in my palette, and I'm going to dab this in to the highlighted areas, just before we go dark on the picture. So just dab this in, and then using a clean damp brush, soften it down into that highlighted area. Okay, a little bit of blue. 
and then on top of that one that's damp, a little bit of French ultramarine, so that's cerulean blue, and I'm going to a little bit of French ultramarine as well, just to add to the corners as we go along. We'll get more detail in these highlights as we go, but I just want to kind of get this in for the early stages. Then we'll do the same on the other one. Right, so let's go in for the lamp black, and there's a little bit of burnt umber in there as well. And we need to kind of get some detail in these eyes now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is very carefully work out an outline for these eyes, where the edge of the eye goes. So I kind of pick that in. And that comes to about there. Just working out as I go along, looking at the angles that these lines go. This is nearly horizontal, this part. And then kind of curves around as we go. If we miss something, we can always take some paint off to pull up a little highlight here and there as well. Which is probably what I'll do anyway with this one. So, so kind of work it around as we go. And once you got that far, We'll fill that area in. <laughs> Beautiful birds, they really are. That cuts into there. Again, keeping looking back and forth at your reference photo as you go along. And the same here. Got quite a lot of paint on my brush. Do a second fill it in. We'll soften this down as we go along anyway. I want to get this edge for the highlights softer than that. And I think what I might do, because we've got... Yeah, we've got a highlight coming down the side here of the eye. Which you'll see on the reference photo. Get that painted in. And then wash out the brush. So there's hardly any water on there and just soften down this edge. Do the same again. Wash your brush. Soften this edge down. A little bit darker in this head, this area here, so I just want to darken that down a little bit more. Soften it down. Then we we'll go to the highlight area. Make sure you haven't got any water on the metal ferrule there, by the way. Because as I've said many times in the past, it can be a pain because it just blobs onto the painting. Just when you don't want it to do it. And you think, oh no, not again. Because I have a habit of doing that. So what I'm doing, I'm just kind of very lightly touching the paper around the edge of this black area. It needs to be darker yet again, yet, so it's not quite dark enough there. Um, and just kind of soften that edge up just a little bit, not too much. And I'm going to go in there with a little bit of French ultramarine, straight from the pan, straight from the um, the colours I've got, just to damp that in. And the same on the top. Then back into your black again, which is blacky blue. It's a little bit thin, my black at the moment, so I'm going to add a little bit more to the mix. And again, we'll come back in here and add that colour. See, black can be quite bland on its own, can't it? So you need to make sure you add a little bit of colour to it, um, be it a little bit of burnt umber or a lizard crimson if you want a warmer black. So you can do it that way around. And again, I'm bringing this down. Just want to get this edge quite tidy. I know we've got some hairs going over there, some some feathers, <laughs> which will be going over the top of that. And again, there's a bit of a highlight around this edge of this this eyeball here. So I just want to kind of bring that around. And as before, I'll soften that down as we go. So this is still looking a bit light. Now I've gone dark with the black, it's still looking a bit on the light side. 
So again, soften this edge down that little bit. I'm going to come into here and soften that. A few more details to drop into there as well. But that is starting to come together as you can see now. So when it starts to come to life, you know, you think, mm. you can see why I tend to do the eyes first. And to soften this down a bit more. It's a bit darker down here down compared to here. And there's a bit of a highlight. Just zoom into that a little bit more for you, I think, just so you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully it's still in focus. So yeah, so I just want to soften that down a little bit more down there. Okay, remember to use a piece of paper, put your hand on, just protect your paper. And then what I want to do is work out where the outside of this eye goes. So we've got like an inner black area here, which is this bit. Okay, I keep looking at the photo back and forward. Just so you can see where things go, it's quite a thick, quite a wide area down here, then goes to a thin line as it goes around the corner. And then we've got another piece which tapers off from here, which it does. And that goes all the way over the top of the eye, well, it's about here roughly. This will be softened down as we go. And this is the bottom of the eye, which will be a bit more a bit browner as we go. So we're gonna just kind of mark it in with a nearly dry brush at the moment, just so I can see where things go. And then that will go to about here, then we've got a piece that comes out. So my brush is just about dry. A little bit of paint on that ball. And that's gonna you can see the bristles starting to spray apart now. That's how dry I'm working this, just so I can get some marks in there, so I can see where things are. You know, because you kind of plan and map out where you want to go with your paint first. Then we know this comes down to here. Right, so we'll get a little bit of brownie colour. Uh, and this is going to be a little bit of yellow ochre, burnt umber and burnt sienna. So yellow ochre, burnt umber, burnt sienna. And that's going to go down here and kind of drop into the bottom of this eye just to soften this little line I've made so far. And again, this is just the first layer of uh, kind of wash in there, just so we've got something to work on the top of. The same would apply to underneath this eye, to the eyelid there, and just drop that into the same area. And remember I said about um, this line here, we're just going to soften that down, just a clean, damp brush. Just to tickle it in, soften it down as we go. And this will give you an idea, no pun intended, how I do just the one eye. And I'm going to go a little bit of black. And I just want to put in a few marks here and there just to suggest where some of these details go within this eye. Okay, then let's start working on where some of these creases, little gaps, little cuts. We need to add a little bit of brownie red into this as we go along. But just start working out where some of these little bumps and cuts go. Don't have to be too precise on this part, I just want to kind of suggest where they all are. Which is what I'm working on. And then this will open up, and then again, this will get darker. A little bit of lamp black. Just to kind of darken the underside of this uh, top eyelid. I might put a little bit of brownie colour in there as well. This is a bit of burnt umber, just to add to the mix. as we go, and then working on where these little marks go for the top of the eyelid. You can see why I use a double zero brush, because it's uh, you need that detail in there. Um, as I mentioned, this is a Winsor & Newton uh, Cotman Series 111, size zero zero, 
<laughs> and the one I do use is the Rosemary & Co, which is quite good. So Rosemary & Co, and that's the spotter brushes. I know other artists use them as well. I'm just going around this with a little bit of Burnt Umber and Burnt Sienna mix. Get a bit of warmth in there now. As we go. Okay. Just looking at these little circle marks, little curls that's in here. That's what I'm working on. And I think once we've got this done, we'll let it dry. And we're just touching any kind of fine lines or marks we need to put in there. Because I just noticed that this needs to be softer in there as well. But as you can see, that eye is nearly done. And it's taking a little bit of time, but that's what we've got. So I always say to you, just make sure you've got plenty of time to sit and paint. You know, turn the radio off, or you can have the radio on if you want to. It depends if you want to listen to me or not. <laughs> I haven't exactly got dual set tones, so... Uh... You can see this highlight's really standing out now because obviously the darker that we've gone, the highlight will really kind of stand out for you. Right, so what I want to do again is wash the brush out and then again soften this line down a little bit more just to get it a bit softer. This Bockingford paper is really handy for kind of layering and softening. And I've just noticed there's like a little little highlight mark here, barely visible, but we can make it. So what we need to do, a damp clean brush, just go over the area, just a few times, just tap it, tap it, tap it. And then with your tissue, lift it off, okay? And again, lift it off. And that's a little highlight mark that's in there as well. Okay, so that's more or less for the first eye. We will darken underneath her a little bit more, but that'll give us some idea how we go about doing one eye. Okay, so we need to kind of get some of these details in here now. So burnt sienna, burnt umber. <laughs> get it right, Paul, get it right. And tap some of these marks in. This will kind of bring that colour in now, which is what we want. Just to kind of look at the direction that these go in on the photo. And bring them into shot. Bring them into play. Because after this, we'll work on the beak. Then once the beak is done, we can then think about doing the white areas. 
And how do we do that? Well, we have to put a layer of colour down first and then you build on the top using watercolour white. I mean, the thing with the barn owl painting, we do use a lot of watercolour white. If you haven't got watercolour white, you can use gouache or gouache, depends how you pronounce it. This is very similar, it's all water based. Um, you can use acrylic white as well, which I use occasionally for some of my paintings. Um, and that works quite well actually, but it's just obviously it's a more permanent fixture. So you put the acrylic down, and before you know it, you know, you've got it down, you can't get it off again. <laughs> so once it's on, it's on. Okay, so I kind of just soften this out a little bit. I don't want it too harsh. I'm looking at the photo where these go. And the same down here, just to soften them down. Okay, I'm going to do the same on the area we just painted. This needs to be a bit darker around there, I just noticed. So we can do that. So that's that area soften there as well. Just tickle in little circles I'm making there at the moment. I'm going to go up a little bit of burnt umber and lamp black. Not too much. Put a few lines in there just to show that it's darker inside this little crease area. Okay. And that, I think, is about it for the eyes. If you do fancy painting this bar now, the complete portrait, not just the eyes, have a look at my Patreon channel there, for slash the Devon Artist, and I've got the complete version of this on there with over, I think it's over five hours of video tuition. And I'll guide you all the way through from the start right through to the finish on how to paint this bar now. But don't forget also on Patreon, I've got a completely free video tutorial on how to paint a robin. You get the outline drawing and the photograph as well to go with that. And that you have to give me any email addresses or anything. So go on there, have a go at it, and let me know how you get on because I'd love to see your version of the tutorial. But don't forget, you can also join in with my online community as well. And I'll guide you all the way through for all the different steps for all my videos on there. There's about 100 hours worth of videos now. So all I ask you to do now is click on subscribe and remember to click on that little bell icon as well because at least that way around you'll get notified when I put a new video here on YouTube. Other than that, if you fancy learning how to paint wildlife in watercolours, click on the little button to the right or become a patron on the screen here and uh, I'll see you there.